Very well. So this is a similar problem. You have three masses, uh, similar to number five in this homework. Can you see that? Barely, but it's there. So uh, you have three masses, each of them 200 grams. And I'm gonna, that's, that's fine, sorry for the glare. Uh, these rods are rigid and are massless, so they do not contribute to the moment of inertia. And this is a sensor over here, right? So, I guess center, because my triangle is really ugly. So being over there. Um, so you are you have this um, this arrangement of masses, and you are rotating it right uh, along the center of um, um, the center of mass, the center of the of the triangle. Um, you have to calculate the moment of inertia i. That's for part a, and then for part b. What is the triangle's kinetic energy if it is rotating about the axis at five revolutions per second? Very well. So the moment of inertia is almost like the center of mass, but instead of being, uh, I should probably just get rid of these two. Instead of being uh, an average, it's just a sum. So the sum of all the particles, the mass of that particular particle, and the uh, distance from the center of rotation squared. So in this case, we have uh, all the masses are the same. That means that you know, we can take it out of the sum. And uh, the radius, um, oops, I guess I didn't get the distance. Not the radius, the distance. Uh, 40 centimeters. Okay, so what is the distance of each of these masses to the center of rotation? Well, you have your triangle. Looks like that. Each one is 0 0.4. And you want to know what is this distance? Uh, well, it is 0 0.2 meters from here. Uh, and then you have a right triangle over here. Uh, you know that this angle is 60 degrees because it is an equi equilateral triangle. So you have something that looks like this. And you want to know this side. So for this one, you use the cosine. For this one, you use the sine. So um, opposite over, I guess you need the tangent, opposite over adjacent is equal to tangent of 60 degrees. You know the adjacent, the opposite is the one you're trying to get. So it is going to be tangent 
of 60 degrees times 0 0.2 meters. And can you still see that? Yes, okay, very well. So tangent of 60 is 1.73 times 0 0.2, that's 0 0.34. So this whole thing is 0 0.34. Um, but you are looking at uh, the halfway point. Hmm. Actually, I wonder if it is just divided by two. Yeah, so the other way to do it is you have a 30 degree angle. This is still a 90 degree, and you want the whole thing. So tangent 30 times point uh, 0.2, that's uh, 0 0.11. That makes more sense, I think, than this one. So. This is the construction that you should use. This angle you know that is 30 degrees because it's half. This angle you know that is 90 degrees because it is a uh, straight angle. Uh, this one you know that is 0.2 because it's half. And this one is uh, 0.11. So, Zero point eleven and zero point two meters. Okay, good. Um, then we can get this distance over here. Um, actually, that's the distance that we all, always wanted. Hmm, I should have get it directly. So this is thirty degrees. Zero point two. This is the hypotenuse. What, it, what we really want. Uh, so we can use cosine of theta, cos of cosine of 30 is equal to 0 0.2 uh, opposite over hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse, can you still see that? Yes. Is equal to this 0 0.2 over cosine of 30 degrees, which is Uh, 0 0.23. Better. So this is R. Okay. So it is squared. So Ri is 0 0.23. It is the same distance for each of them, because in each case you have the same triangle, 30 degrees here, 90 degrees here, 0.2. OK, so the, the mass is the same for all of them. So then this is just uh, three times, because you have three of these, and the distance is the same for all of them, the mass times the 0 0.23 meters um, squared. And the mass is 0.2 kilograms and the three well is there. So we can get it.
So the moment of inertia is 0 0.032. So kilogram meter time meter squared. Those are the units. Okay, so to make it a little bit more clear, I'm gonna get rid of this. This is the moment of inertia. So think about this one for a little bit. Um, if one of the masses is greater, the moment of inertia increases, which means that it's more difficult to rotate it. If all three increase, it's still the same, it is more difficult to rotate it. If the distance increase, it's also more difficult to rotate. You can think about how when there's like a really long, you know, like a, a log or something that you can lift, you know, but you try to rotate it and you can't, you know, it just it requires so much torque. You cannot do it. That is because the, the moment of inertia is analogous to the mass. So the mass is, um, it tells you uh, how strongly an object opposes movement. The moment of inertia tells you how strongly an object opposes rotation. So this is part uh, part A. For part B, you wanted the kinetic energy if it is rotating at five revolutions per second. So as I mentioned in the lecture, can I, do I let you see? Yes, I do, a little bit. Okay. Um, so you know the formula for the kinetic energy, one half of mv squared. I told you that you don't have to learn anything new. So the rotational kinetic energy is one half. Instead of the mass, you use the, uh, the analog of the mass, so the moment of inertia. Instead of the velocity, you use the angular velocity, and this is the rotational kinetic energy. So we calculated I and we have uh, omega. Um, so one revolution, you, you want this to be, you know, whenever you have things that are rotating, you want um, radians. So one revolution is two pi radians. So five revolutions are gonna be how many radians? Well, 10 pi, five times this one divided by one. So the rotational kinetic energy is one half of 0 0.032 kilogram meter squared. And I'm running out of space over here, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Uh, times 10 pi, which we can probably write as something like that, right? Squared. So the rotational kinetic energy is going to be 31. 0.4159 squared times 0 0.032 kilogram meter square, square divided by two. So 15.8. Let's, uh, let's check the units. So the units are kilogram meter squared divided by second squared. That's a joule. So this is in joules as expected from, um, from an energy. Cool. So, you know, pretty much the same thing. You just have to make sure that you switch to the same, uh, to the correct quantity. So moment of inertia instead of mass. And this is the definition of the moment of inertia. It's just a mass 
times the square of the distance from the center of rotation. You know, the other thing that you should realize is that if you try to rotate from here instead of from the center, it is going to be more difficult. And I invite you to calculate the moment of inertia and compare it to this one um, if you do it from here instead of from here. Cool. So see you next time.